is anything better than two armies of mortals fighting it out in my name. And the best part? Knowing how completely into it they are. But hold on a minute. Something's not right. Let me just go down and see what it is. What in the Hellheim is going on here? A sad barbarian? Don't tell me you're depressed by a dearth of detail in your destruction. Vexed by a lack of variety in your violence? Certainly you don't think you've seen all there is to see of smash and bash. Meh. Well, it's your lucky day, you somber scald. For I give unto you a mighty gift. Now go forth once more, brave warrior, armed so with the knowledge that the pen is indeed mightier than the sword. Uh, hammer. Hi, I'm Matt Dickman. And I'm Ryan Roddy. In July of 2020, we released our debut novel, The Dark That Dwells, the first installment in our sci-fi fantasy space opera series. If you saw our first episode of Doctoring the Books about penetrating traumas, you know we're also pediatric emergency medicine doctors. Our goal with this series is to share the knowledge and training we use every day to help you inject some realism into your writing. On today's episode of Doctoring the Books, we're going to show you how to kill your characters with blunt force trauma. Can I get a waffle? Can I please get a waffle? So what is blunt force trauma exactly? Broadly speaking, this type of injury involves non-penetrating traumas delivering significant force to the organ systems of the body. In real life, this often happens in accidents involving sports injuries, automobile collisions, falls, or explosions. In fantasy and sci-fi, those sort of things still happen, but sometimes we come up with a mechanism that's completely improbable or something no one's ever used before. For we verbose few with vivid imaginations and pen and paper at the ready, there's no limit to the situations our unfortunate characters can find themselves in. Regardless of the scenario or injury implement, organizing this subject by anatomical region can help you keep track of how your character should respond to their injury. If you understand the basics of reality, you can learn how to bend them. Or, in the case of bones, break them. Okay, let's take this anatomically, region by region. We'll highlight major areas of the body affected by blunt force trauma, homing in on a few of the injuries and complications you might see there. This list can't and won't be comprehensive. There are far too many injuries described in the literature, and explaining the complications for each and every one could be an hour-long lecture in itself. So, we'll stick to the ones we find most interesting and do our best to show you how to use them in your writing. Concussions are a familiar trope in literature and movies, but often this condition is over-exaggerated or described incorrectly. A concussion is more of a description of the symptoms seen after a mild traumatic brain injury. This generally involves a loss of function rather than any structural abnormality. A concussion usually happens after an external blow to the head, or a situation causing the brain to contact the inner surface of the skull, such as in an acceleration-deceleration injury. In real life, we often see this in sports, but it can happen during automobile accidents, falls, or even in a pillow fight. Seriously. Common symptoms include confusion, amnesia surrounding the event, headache, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, repetition of a question over and over, emotional ability, slurred speech, disorientation, or problems with coordination such as stumbling. These symptoms can last hours or even days to weeks and months. In general, rest and decreased stimulation from external stimuli will help this resolve more quickly. But for some folks, this can be a chronic issue. So, how can you use blunt force head injuries in your writing? Let's say your squad of space troopers is flying through enemy fire on a transport. Explosions are going off all around them, jostling and shaking the aircraft. A lucky laser blast takes out an engine, and the pilot yells the phrase no one wants to hear. We're going down. As the transport crashes into the jungle, your character has just enough time to check on her commanding officer before everything goes dark. Several hours later, the officer comes to, but something's wrong. He can't recall the crash. He cries for no reason, laughs inappropriately at other times. The light hurts his eyes, and walking makes him vomit. So he's wounded. Nothing your character can't handle, right? Except for one very important complication. Her CO doesn't seem to remember the details of the mission or the coordinates of their rendezvous. Until he can heal and recall that information, your character has to keep them both alive, low in supplies and surrounded by enemies. So what happened to him? Well, it seems he may have hit his head during the crash and suffered a concussion. Notice the emotional liability, the trouble recalling specific information, and the photophobia or light sensitivity. 
Uh, normally this wouldn't be too hard to recover from, but we've thrown him into a pretty tough situation, so it may take a little bit longer than usual. Blunt force traumas to the neck can affect either the cerebrovasculature or the airway itself, depending on the nature of the injury. But vascular injuries to the blood vessels supplying the brain are much more common. Most often, blunt force injuries to these vessels come from a significant force that twists or stretches the vessels, often against the underlying bone. Seat belts, falls, and strangulation account for a majority of these in real life. But even minor events such as throwing back a cold one, headbanging, or even coughing have been known to cause damage. The big problem here is tearing of the vessel wall, which leads to clots, bleeding, or pseudoaneurysm formation, all of which can compromise blood flow to the area of the brain that the vessel was meant to supply. Characters suffering from these injuries might have a delay in their symptoms, sometimes as long as hours to days. The actual symptoms themselves would depend on the area of the brain affected, though, essentially causing clinical signs of a stroke. So how could we use this information in a story? Imagine you have a man being pursued through the woods on horseback. He's looking over his shoulder frequently, leaves and small branches scratching his cheeks and face. Suddenly, the ambush is sprung and a rope is pulled and suspended. It catches him on the left side of his neck and he's yanked from the saddle. While in captivity, he slowly begins to develop a strange symptom, speaking and writing in gibberish, much to his and his captor's frustration. This injury and its complication have led to even more conflict for your hapless hero. So what happened? His neck injury caused a clot formation in his carotid artery, cutting off blood supply to that side of his brain. This particular area affects his speech planning center, known as Broca's area. So he developed an expressive aphasia. Yeah, and he can understand to a limited degree, and he can even think about what he wants to say, but he can't get it out in any meaningful way that anyone could ever understand. The chest is jam-packed with an assortment of life-sustaining organs and structures that generally like to stay intact. Disruption of any of the tissues here can lead to major complications, as previously discussed in our penetrating traumas video. Crushing or destroying these tissues can cause some of the same complications, but how could you use that in your writing? One particularly interesting complication of blunt force trauma to the chest is a condition known as flail chest. This happens when three or more ribs are broken in two or more places. This effectively causes a section of the chest wall to float or be mechanically separate from the rest of the surrounding chest. It causes an interesting situation where that portion will move in an opposite orientation to the rest of the chest while breathing. Along with the underlying lung bruising, victims of this condition suffer from significant respiratory distress. While the chances of this condition being fixed are pretty low outside of a surgical setting, knowing about it can add a little realism to any chest injury your character might sustain. Wondering how this could fit into your story? Picture a party of adventurers delving deep into an ancient crypt. They have the map, and they know the treasure is contained in the final resting place of a wizard who died eons ago. But as they navigate the maze inside, surviving the undead inhabitants who arise at the desecration of the tomb, the cleric steps on a loose floor panel, and a bar of iron swings from a mechanism above, striking him in the chest like a battering ram. His companions drag him to safety, fighting the horde of skeletons and zombies atop a pile of collapsed brick and mortar. When his tunic is moved away, severe bruising and a deformity are seen, and strangely, a portion of his chest moves opposite the rest with each ragged gasp for air. He can't seem to catch his breath, and when another character puts her ear to his chest, she hears nothing. As more and more of the fiends close in, and the torchlight begins to fade, the cleric suffocates from his collapsed lung, unable to draw in breath and utter the prayer that would heal him and drive back the darkness. What happened here? Our poor cleric suffered a chest wall injury causing flail chest that we discussed earlier, and he also sustained a pneumothorax, so his lung collapsed, causing air to be inside the chest but outside of the lung. And that puts a lot of pressure on that side, basically making it useless. It can't inflate. And then all the work has to be done by the other lobes on the other side of the chest. As you can imagine, that would make it almost impossible to speak. Blunt force injuries to the abdomen result in energy transfer to the organs contained there and can cause lacerations or tears in the organs such as the intestines, spleen, liver, and kidneys. The abdominal aorta is a major vessel which can be injured as well, leading to a loss of blood supply to the lower body or in severe bleeding. One particularly interesting organ here is the spleen. Injuries to the spleen involve left-sided trauma to the upper abdomen, lower chest, or flank. Victims might have pain in those areas, but they might also have pain that radiates to the left shoulder, a peculiarity of irritation of the phrenic nerve due to some quirks in fetal development of the nervous system. 
One of the most frequently encountered complications after an injury here would be internal bleeding. This can progress over minutes to hours or sometimes over days, especially if rupture is delayed. Characters suffering from a splenic injury might show a progression of pain and hardening of the abdomen, as well as a pallor of the skin and depressed mental status due to low blood pressure. How could abdominal traumas feature in your story? Imagine a jousting tournament among several knights of the realm. The king has decided to join in against the better judgment and protests of his advisors. One by one, he defeats the other participants, unseating each challenger. But an assassin is at work, placing an irritating barb beneath the king's saddle. During the final bout, the king is again victorious, but as he turns his horse at the end of the list, the horse rears back and throws him to the ground. In the chaos, the animal steps on his left abdomen, and the king is gravely injured. Over the next few hours, the king is bedridden, but manages to speak with his advisors. He seems to be recovering, but then begins to complain of worsening pain in his shoulder and grows pale. Over the next 12 hours, he fades in and out of consciousness until ultimately he is discovered dead in the morning. Thanks to the prolonged course of his deterioration, the assassin is long gone by the time his deadly instrument is discovered. What happened? Seems the king suffered a splenic laceration or a tear to the organ after the horse's hoof crushed it. Yeah, and there was a lot of bleeding under that diaphragm, which irritated it and led to the shoulder pain. If we'd had a surgeon available, he probably would have made it, but there would have been a lot of blood loss and infections would ultimately be a problem. Blood force trauma to the arms and legs can cause devastating complications such as fractures, bleeding, amputations, and infections. Common sequelae such as lifelong limp or a deformity causing loss of function are easily imagined. But what about a more insidious outcome, one sure to be unique in your story? One such syndrome would be that arising from a crush injury, disruption of blood flow, damage to the muscle, embolism of fat. There are numerous ways to leave your character with a less than optimal outcome, seemingly unrelated to the initial event. See if this fits into your book. A brave hero determined to save his family from an encroaching force of invading tribesmen decides to flee at dawn, taking his family and the bare minimum of supplies across the border. Trouble is, the only remaining route out of the forest is over an old bridge, one that should have collapsed long ago. Guarded by a gnarly old troll, the crossing has been maintained, but only for those who can pay the toll. Obviously short on funds, the hero attempts to win a way across through a battle of wits, but he makes a mistake while answering a riddle and it comes down to blows instead. Father's rusted family sword is no match for the petrified tree trunk wielded by the troll, so he ends up with his leg crushed. The troll will not let them pass, but he decides to show mercy, allowing the family to drag their wounded patriarch away. The family manages to get him to shelter, but he's in rough shape. Over the next hours, he develops redness and swelling, severe pain and nausea with vomiting. His lower leg becomes tense and wood-like. It goes pale, and there is pain far out of proportion when the area is barely moved or touched. When he urinates, it is reddish-brown and dark. The skin of his leg begins to turn purple in certain areas, black in others. And though his wife, a local healer, is able to splint the leg and ease his pain, he eventually passes away in a state of confusion, leaving his oldest son to take up the family sword and help bury his father in the morning. What happened? He developed a compartment syndrome in that calf where the increased pressure decreases blood circulation. It causes tissue death affecting the muscles and the skin. The crush itself can lead to harmful release of biological molecules, chemicals that can lead to kidney injury, ultimately cardiac dysrhythmia and arrest. Oh, this is heavy. Again, this has only been a superficial survey of some of the interesting ways that blood force trauma can add some realism to your writing. But hopefully you've gotten a sense of the mechanisms of these types of injuries and the damage they can do. After all, variety is the spice of life, or death. Well, for any methods we weren't able to cover here, or for any specific questions you might have, comment below or shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And if you found this topic helpful, informative, or at the very least entertaining, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any of the sundry, sordid ways for how, how to, to kill, kill your, your characters. characters. Bye.